Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 19th, 2024. Well, let's take a look at what happened overnight. We had um, markets con surging around uh, the world last night, except for a couple just on the back of that tech rally yesterday that was truly remarkable the way they uh, came in and continued to push those tech uh, numbers higher. But I think it really is an attempt to get the S&P 500 to finally break out and they saw an opportunity and they're making that push right now. So let's take a look at um, what's going on around the world. Asian markets last night were uh, mostly higher with the Nikkei rising sharply last night. Taiwan also up substantially. Um, we had uh, Hong Kong and Shanghai a little bit lower as um, uh, China continues to float around that five-year low and really struggling overall. If we uh, take a look at European markets, they are green across the board this morning. Now, not super green, uh, maybe just a little bit of cautiousness um, here this morning. Um, UK retail sales numbers um, showed a decline um, where ours um, yesterday were extremely hot. Um, and that is having um, knock-on effects as well, raising um, our bond yields. Our bond yields have been going up, and they're up a little bit again this morning, which is odd seeing the market rallying as this goes back up because this would kind of fly in the face of, yeah, probably not likely um, rate reductions coming from the Fed um, at least soon. So um, that's kind of an interesting circumstance, but they are moving up here again this morning. As a matter of fact, we have with the uncertainty in the Red Sea and these um, concerns of the Fed not being able to pull back on rates, um, we are actually seeing gold. A, um, a spike. Um, gold this morning is up $9.90 an ounce. You know, it finished up yesterday strongly um, and we're seeing silver, copper, platinum, palladium, um, anything in the um, more defensive area of the market seems to be um, showing some strength here this morning. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I do very much appreciate it. Hope you had a great evening and you're all ready for Friday. Looks like we got a bullish move heading into um, the Friday um, Friday move and maybe we'll, we'll look at the SPY here in just a little bit and see if there's a chance that we can even break out and uh, finally see that S&P 500 at a new high. It seems to me that's where the attempt is with the big push in big tech. Let's take a look at the diamonds here. As you can see, diamonds had a nice little pop yesterday and I had mentioned if we can push up through this resistance right in here, then our next level would be to retest the highs. And it looks like we're headed there this morning, as you can see, popping through here in the pre-market, trying to pump it um, up here early to see if we can push on up here and retest these highs here in the chart. But one thing I will remind you is that we continue to be in this very wide range, range bound area of the market. So on a pop, a gap up open and a pop up here, if we can stretch out, here and break out that's one thing but we do want to watch for that possibility that we could whips on what I mean by that is we pop up in here we get all stretched out and then we have that possibility of whipping the other direction so be really careful here and with that attempt I think at trying to 
push. I think it's an institutional push trying to get the S&P 500 to break out. And with that uh, potential, once we break out, then all bets are off. We'll see if they can continue to push as we head into more of these um, earnings reports and really start ramping up on these earnings reports. Let's take a look. Um, if the bulls continue to find that inspiration, then I would see no reason at all why we couldn't test that resistance here in the chart, none whatsoever, and that possibility even that we could break out here into blue sky highs. If the bears come up with any data today to um, disappoint uh, the market, then um, you can see we've got a little bit of price support right in here. We could come back in here and hold, test right in that area. And if that doesn't hold, I would suggest we're probably coming back down here to test these areas and maybe even coming into that all-time high breakout here in uh, the diamonds to retest that area as support. Let's take a look at that S&P 500. I think this is the big driver here. The, um, as you can see, they're pumping this in the pre-market. And if we can get this or hold this into the open of the day or even build in this pre-market push um, for the day, we will finally have a S&P 500 breakout. Now, the question is, is that going to hold? Um, we've been struggling and struggling and struggling here so long and they, they just pushed everything they had into big tech giants yesterday trying to make that happen. And um, now we're going to get that pop out here this morning. So watch for that possibility that we could break out and now we've achieved our goal and everything backs off and we whipsaw in um, S&P 500. Don't get caught in a trap here. <clears throat> One of the things you want to make sure and do is when we stretch like this, make sure you give some time for um, that to rest, consolidate after that breakout, rest, and then you have the better opportunity to uh, jump into that trade instead of chasing this move to the upside that can be very very dangerous so watch that closely but it looks like right now every reason to believe that the with the bulls inspiration unless something changes here this morning they're going to push this on through and finally break the s p 500 to a, a new record high and blue sky in fact i'll bet they've already got the hats um ready um so that you'll see them um on the floor um of the market we're in the hats of the new record highs here then um, if you um, find that reason if we find that reason for um, a little bit of bearishness in, in the data today then a push back into here I think there's some price support right through here that we could find and if that were to fail then back down here to test this area in the chart on the S&P 500 um, let's take a look at the cues one has to wonder what's going to happen when big tech, when the tech giants stop um, um, this chase that's going on because we've got PE ratios that are just unbelievably inflated here on many of these big tech giants. And yet we continue this process of chasing and chasing and chasing and almost on its own, the Magnificent Seven continues to lift the market indexes higher. If you notice, and well, and I'll show you evidence that the majority of stocks weren't moving up yesterday. It was just um, a tech led, big tech giant led move to the upside. So breaking out here, all time highs in the QQQ, every reason to believe that they're going to continue to push this morning, at least at the moment, gap up and run, gap up and run. Um, that leaves um, some danger in the market because if we do find reason for bears, then the pullbacks could be substantial and painful um, just to fill those gaps in the market. So we do have that upside trend. Everything is good in here. I'm not trying to suggest there's anything bad here in that chart. But again, one has to wonder what is going to occur when big tech finally finds some selling. Can the market hold up 
without those seven tech giants. Be interesting to see um, at this point because they so dominate the indexes now. Let's take a look at our IWM. IWM struggled in here a little bit yesterday, but by the end of the day, ended up pushing on up, leaving a little bit of a hammer type pattern in there, trying to hold this price support. I've been mentioning this price support for a long, long time, and we found it, held off of that, bounced, and we are trying to push up here this morning, but you'll notice here in our largest index of the market that does not have big tech giants included in it, we continue to lag way behind and even signal that possibility that we could run into some price resistance here and continue to fail. So keep a close eye on this. If the bulls can push through on this, then let's look for a test of this re resistance in here and pushing through that resistance right back up here to test this trend break as resistance and this bigger area of resistance here in the chart. If they can't do that, if we find some bearishness here today, well then look for that opportunity that this could continue to fail right along that area of this downtrend that's been started in the Russell. Now if we take a look at our VIX, it's interesting that our VIX yesterday popped and dropped on that move, but didn't drop as much as a person would think considering the surge that we saw in the market at the end of the day um, really trying to pump us up so as you can see coming back down and testing some price support in the chart um, perfectly fine and I would guess with the gap up this morning is going to push us lower so we may actually come back down and put um, put a test here on this little upside trend again to see whether that fear is uh, creeping up with the bond yields rising or if that fear is going to drop. Once again, I would watch carefully today for that potential of a whipsaw um, in the market. If we take a look at our T2122, T2122 did rally yesterday, but you can see um, it was such a big move yesterday and we're trying to break all-time highs. Well, you want to notice here that we didn't get all that much done in T2122, and that's simply because there was a lot of stocks that didn't rally. So in this, we did come up out of this bearish re or bullish reversal um, zone here in the chart, which we were kind of expecting uh, that yesterday for the relief rally. It just kind of turned out a little bit differently than I thought with just a select few companies rallying to the upside. So with this gap up this morning, we'll probably be pushing up in here or even past that area in the mid range of the chart. And what we're going to need to see is that good follow through push to the upside, not just a push to break out that S&P 500 and then start to sink or fall back. We need to see them continue to push if this is a legit rally to the upside. And then if we take a look at our T2108, there's this is where that concern comes in. Um, you'll notice here in T2108, the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, it did improve yesterday, but not very much, just marginally improved. So what that says is that we had a select sector, a select number of stocks that were really rallying those tech giants that really pushed. But the majority of the market wasn't participating in that move. So you'll want to watch that carefully. Now, I do suspect with this gap up this morning, this will continue to rise. That's a good thing. We are holding on to, um, well, some support right in here. If we can push back up in there and just keep in mind, if we can keep pushing to the upside, we're going to run into a little bit of resistance here in that chart. You're also going to see that problem here in T2107 that although we get the impression looking at the index, indexes, we are uber bullish. Well, notice right here, we were essentially flat yesterday in the percentage of stocks above the 200 day, which again suggests that only a very select group of stocks were rallying um, and right now they dominate the indexes so they can push things up and make things look much better than they maybe really are 
overall in the market. So just be a little bit careful here. Finding support, that's a good sign here in T2107 if they can continue to extend that to the upside and we can maintain that bullishness, not just um, a, a spike here in the pre-market and then see it falter and, and push back down. If we take a look at our uh, T2101, taking a look at that, we did see that breadth push just a little bit higher yesterday on that buy wave, but notice that it kind of hooked over here. Okay, we did slip a little bit. We didn't see that huge breadth increase. And again, that was because it was a select few stocks making that rally. So we'll want to watch this carefully here today. We need to see that breadth continue to expand on the buy wave. If we were to happen to see this breadth kind of hook over um, today after this big push to break out the S&P 500, then that might signal that we're running out of energy heading into all of these um, earnings reports that are be going to be coming around the bend here soon. If we take a look um, at our economic calendar here for today, our economic calendar, we do have a few things that we're going to want to pay attention to here this morning and pay attention to and, and ignore, uh, it looks like, um, as a possibility with that super, super strong jobs number and the extremely weak manufacturing number we just have a capacity right now to ignore and and and, and dive in chasing um, those tech giants so maybe we just ignore this here today we'll see or perhaps it'll be bullish for the market um, existing home sales here this morning we'll want to be paying attention to that consensus is suggesting that we are going to be pretty flat here on existing home sales Watch that carefully. Um, consumer sentiment uh, coming out this morning. Consensus is looking for a 69.2, so a little bit of decline in that consumer sentiment. Uh, keep an eye on that. We have three Fed speakers today, um, actually uh, two different times daily. We'll be speaking a Baker Hughes recount and the um, Treasury International uh, capital report which we'll largely ignore so not too much on that front now on the earnings calendar here today I'm going to run through these quickly this morning because there's a I didn't write a blog today um, a no blog Friday so I'm going to run through these pretty quickly um, we have a bunch of regional banks um, LA Financial will be reporting today um, CMA will be reporting uh, Fifth Third Bank will be reporting um, HBAN Huntington will be reporting we've got Regions Financial we've got Schlumberger one of the um, only ones that's not financial related today and um, State Street um, and last but not least Travelers Insurance, which has been extremely bullish and continues to push higher here on insurance. So, Schlumberger and Travelers, are the, uh, that's basically all there is other than regional banks here this morning. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon when it pops up, she'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. And thank you so much for all the kindness that you show me um, in those comments. Um, um, worried about my my cold my health and and well wishes of health thank you so much i um, you humble me every day thank you um let's take a look at um, some of these stocks that may be setting up and remember um these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you need to do your own due diligence you need to be very very careful how you approach 
a gap up market but that being said follow your own trading rules follow your own guidelines make sure every trade fits you personally and never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade idea now while i've been talking about this um, uh, this morning um, about a big tech rally you know i gotta say i'm okay with it as long as it continues to push the stocks I own higher. And here we have um, a Micron pushing on up. If you guys remember, talked about this earlier this week, uh, picked up this trade, got a nice little profit coming in here. And this morning, it looks like I'm gonna benefit from this tech gap up here this morning. So, hey, um, just because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me doesn't mean I can't make money from the move. So um, keep an eye on MU, looking pretty good. Now, at this point, I wouldn't chase it to the upside, any rest or pullback, though, I think would set up an opportunity here in um, Micron. Now, one that's been really um, slow to pick up here is MDT. Now, MDT is a healthcare uh, medical device maker, but they utilize um, AI, um, a lot of AI in what they do, you know, creating these robots and things to do surgeries and all that kind of stuff. And you can see here in MDT, it is finally um, kind of catching up here on this AI boom. So I would keep an eye on this. This is a nice little resting pattern in here, consolidating pattern. It's going to report on 220, so we got about a month on this. I would watch that carefully. Um, starting to set up pretty good and could be a pretty interesting chart um, if we can pop on through that resistance. So watch that one closely. Also, you guys remember I've been mentioning Walmart all week and Walmart finally making that pop yesterday and started faltering, pushing down and then just took off yesterday, popping through. So we're uh, going to fill this gap here in Walmart and just keep in mind um, it could put potentially continue to rally to move on up retest some of these resistance levels in the chart heading into this next earnings report in about a month so watch that carefully I don't know if I'd want to chase this now at this point um, uh, makes your stop loss kind of deep um, on that trade but watch that closely a little rest a little pullback would set up a nice opportunity um, in that chart. Take a look at Starbucks. I've been talking about Starbucks as that short here for several weeks now and uh, Starbucks making a move here and this is the first time yesterday that we actually popped through this downtrend. Now here's the rule that I trade by. You can try to chase this and you can try to pick this bottom but I have found that too many times I try to pick that bottom we pop up and then we reverse. So be really, really careful of something like that. Try not to chase something like this. Make this hold a higher low in here. Show us that we can break through some resistance, we can hold a higher low, and then show me those buyers stepping up. And um, I'll show you guys anytime we break a downtrend in a chart, it's always the same. We'll break that downtrend, we'll pop through, those that chase usually get stopped out in the pullback right in here, but it's the higher low, the higher low right here, that is the easy low risk entry into the trade. So watch that carefully here for Starbucks if it is turning around, watch for that potential higher low. Um, as you guys know, I've been talking about Coke. Coke has been resting in this pattern, tried to drop and break some support yesterday, but with that surge, um, and um, yesterday afternoon to the upside, it lifted a lot of a lot of things up. No, no big change here. And I'm still waiting to see if Coke can break through this upside opportunity, uh, or upside um, resistance, and break on through and continue to stretch on out. But I will say Coke is looking pretty good. May have some upside potential here. Um, take a look at Mondelez. Mondelez is another defensive sector stock that's been resting in this consolidation. Look for that opportunity that that might push on through if we're going to be bullish. We might as well push up these stocks along with them. So keep a close eye on that. 
uh, Mondelez is looking pretty good. Um, we would want to also be taking a look at Hershey. Now, Hershey sold hard yesterday um, in the morning and then completely reversed here. And one of the reasons I like this chart is it's coming up out of this bottom where we have this rounded bottom breakout pattern in here breaking through that 50-day moving average we're holding and notice that that 50-day moving average is turning up we're starting to see all of that energy breaking here in hershey so watch that carefully if that can hold that higher low there's that downturn break the higher low look for that next opportunity to the upside and hershey could be about ready to go to uh, to the upside so watch that carefully now um, when we look at the market we also have to recognize that there are some places in the market that are not so bullish um, one of those being Tesla uh, Tesla continuing to falter here moving to the downside um, really slipping now I wouldn't want to chase this down this is a pretty strong uh, move to the downside here. What I would want to wait for is I'd want to wait for some kind of rally back. So give me a little bit of maybe a consolidation or a little bit of rally back and then I would be looking for the next opportunity um, to short Tesla. Not looking good here overall and if we um, take a look here We've dropped below our 50-day or 200-day moving average, and I think there's a pretty good chance very, very soon we're going to see that 50 cross down through the 200 in the death cross here on Tesla. So um, just be really careful here. Rally back to test some of these resistance levels in the chart would certainly be a pretty good opportunity uh, for that short. So watch carefully there in the market on that. Um, also, I think um, I mentioned IWM earlier today. If you're if you're thinking that the market is a little bit funky like right now, like I am, I'm going to be watching IWM here because if we rally and show failure in here and our largest index is rolling over to the downside, I'd probably pick a short position here on that trade and that would be just a hedge um, um, just in case the market cannot hold these um, high levels um, and we start to roll back over as we start to get into some of these um, uh, bigger earnings reports that are on the way. So watch that carefully on IWM. Other places you can see there are stocks like JCI. JCI failed its trend, broke down um, overall. Now it's rallied back up a day or so. Uh, we may be pushing into some resistance here in the chart. So look for that opportunity there that we could roll over in JCI and pick up some short positions. Now, when you're looking in the tech sector, um, certainly, um, well, everything looks like a bull in uh, the tech sector. Um, take a look at a stock like Intel. This is uh, more my style of trade. I wouldn't want to chase something that's already flying high, but something that might be breaking this downtrend here so we break the downtrend notice we have that possibility of this double bottom situation so break that downtrend and hold and then look for that next opportunity to the upside here in intel but for example um, something like amd would just be absolutely not interesting to me at this point it is too stretched out too parabolic in this move um, so although everyone's chasing and we're probably going to break out to new record highs here in AMD, um, no chance that I'm going to be chasing it at this point. It needs to rest, consolidate, or pull back before I would have any interest in something like AMD. So um, something to pay attention to in the way I trade. Um, doesn't mean that you have to like it, um, but... Um, just be careful in the chase. Um, take a look at Honeywell. Honeywell's been moving down. We had a nice little bounce back yesterday. Notice we're going to pop into some resistance and downtrend here. Look for that next opportunity that that could slip and roll on lower here in the market on Honeywell. So kind of keep those in mind. Now remember, it's going to report on 2-1, so everything can change around that earnings report. But there are a lot of stocks starting to show us that concern here in the market um, and um, 
well, can the seven seven stocks on their own continue to keep us moving higher perpetually? Uh, we'll see. Yeah, everyone take care. Have a wonderful day. Uh, wish you great profits for today. And more importantly, have an absolutely wonderful weekend with your family. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Take care, everyone.